spoke with Mr. and there's rebar exposed, which means it's time time for a little overhaul. So the bridge is a rural major collector. It's a class one state highway. It has five beams underneath it. It's got the concrete deck and pavement. This is a aluminum railing here and it was constructed in 1962 when the interstate was constructed. And this is what we mean by uh, the fascia concrete failure. As you can see that's rebar. That's not good. Um, and there's another view of that. So the bridge is, 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 is the deck is past its useful life. And one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be replacing these. Uh, you can see how there's different different color here in the concrete. So at some point we went in there and did some patchwork. Well, we're actually going to take these pier caps right off of the. the these columns and replace them in their entirety. So, reinforcing steel that's shown here, and then some of that rust is coming from the bearings and the structural steel that's up above. So, this is kind of a complete bridge replacement. So, we say it's a new bridge. Um, I'm going to say probably 75%. The 80% of this bridge is going to be new. The only thing that's really staying 
is these columns here. We're actually, there's, a, there's an existing pier right here. We're removing that and um, replacing it with new structural steel and um, doing some abutment work on either end. So here's a look at what that bridge is going to look like when it's set and done as far as width, as far as what you would see as you're driving over. Um, it's going to be two six foot six inch shoulders. There's no longer going to be Welcome to the new there. Um, curb and railing. Oh, 11 foot travel ways. This was decided um, a couple years ago when I was here. We talked about sidewalk versus just the shoulder. And since um, the town, since Turbine Line is responsible for plowing, not having that sidewalk there is actually this. And um, it gives enough room for people to ride their bike walk if they so desire. So here's your plan view. The center is shifted about two feet seven inches to the north side. Um, and the total length is 315 feet long. And we are pretty much matching what the width of the existing bridge is right now. So here's why we're all here, the exciting stuff. Road closed. So originally, we were planning on staging construction, so building like one half of the bridge um, at one time, then moving traffic onto there with lights on either end. So there would have been lights at on either end of the bridge. There would have been lights on the off on ramp on the east side of the bridge. What kind of lights? There would have been traffic lights. That was the original plan. Um, and that's how we advertise the project, but uh, JPC Card, who's the contractor, who's the low bidder for the project, um, presented us with another method of uh, building this project. So, quickly, this is what is going to happen here. Is we are going to close Caswell Avenue to traffic. The east-west traffic on Caswell Avenue will be detoured to exit 29 off and on route lanes and cross I-91 with signalized lights. So, as we know, uh, there are people that actually work, they don't do it now, but before they started working on the border crossing, I know that people used to, people that worked at the border, would go over Caswell Avenue, take the, the on-ramp like they're going to Canada and then kind of cross over. <laughs> to where they needed to work. So we're actually going to build a, a road where you're going to be able to cross 91. So if you're coming from Holland East, you take the on-ramp and then the road is going to just go straight across. There'll be lights to, to help you get across the interstate. So this is a little different um, concept. The, but to do that, we also decided that we didn't want any traffic on the interstate making a left-hand turn where this crossing is going to be. So we are going to detour all northbound traffic to Derby Line. You're going to get, get, if you're on the interstate, per se, um, you'll be detoured at exit 28, and you'll have to travel on US 5 to get up this way. Northbound traffic. We get it done. I think we know how to now. They can just get off the exit and go to home. Northbound traffic to the Canadian border is going to be slowed down. Actually, traffic, all traffic is going to be slowed down as you're approaching the border and approaching our crossing. Um, but that's so northbound. South Montreal and Thomas Evans. Wait. Holland will not be able to make a left-hand turn. They're going to be detoured south on US-5 to exit 28 and then back onto I-91 northbound. Mr. Mayor, I'd like a little either way, but based on the traffic analysis. I make that left-hand turn. Yes. Why don't you detour them from that crossing to the one here? May I? To avoid that entire situation. Those people can do that. Mm -hmm. If they I mean, know I, about it, if I mean, they know about it, yeah. they can do that. Um, but we can't detour trucks. Right, but I mean, there's crossing. no reason for a big truck to come up here. Well, if there's a truck that wanted to go to Holland, 
they would have to get off the interstate and make that detour and go back around because they can't use this crossing at all. Right. So I think that if you're from Holland or East and you're very familiar with this crossing, I think that um, if for me, I'd say, oh, no, no problem. I'll just, if I'm coming, go to Canada and I'm coming back, I'll go use this one. Um, and then they'll be able to go across. But we don't want... That is interstate. I'm just saying, in Canada, are there going to be detour signs to say go this way? No. We have not planned it, but that's something that we can think about. So we talked about... We didn't want to get into that with the Canadian added additional signs in Canada, but we, that is a possibility. So northbound traffic going to Holland is 70 cents a gallon? Yes. But if they want to go to Derby Line, they can't make a left turn. The city manager's evaluation is to be made. Okay, so if you're coming from Holland, no, if you're coming from Derby, up the interstate. You, you can't. I, I should make public. Will it be made? Can't go to Derby Line. You can't. If you're, if okay, so I'm on exit 28, and I want to go to Derby Line. You got. You can't go on the interstate. You need to take but the if I go to Holland. I you can, can do that. So that. if I go to Holland, turn around my LCR, oh, yard. No, you can still cross traffic. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. If you're if if you're in Holland, you can still cross traffic. You can cross traffic. Right, but I'm coming from Derby, so I have to take exit 29 because I want to continue up the interstate and not do the whole detour because I don't really like going that way. But if I go to exit 29 and turn right, Albans is held up to us. You can do whatever you want to do. I didn't hear that. Okay. <laughs> so so no, no, here's the thing: is that we that the locals. You know that you probably can do that. Or you go to the go to the duty free shop and turn around and then come back around and cross over. You can do that. But we don't want trucks doing that. Right. So we need to get the trucks off the interstate. That's one of the biggest issues. If it's a delivery truck that's coming to Derby Line, we don't want them doing that. Because as soon as a lot of people start doing that, then we're going to be getting phone calls from the duty free shop and from property, other property owners to say, hey, there's too many people turning around in my driveway. Jackie's going to get those phone calls. Jackie's going to call Seth. And Seth's going to have to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. So you're going to have to figure it out. That's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> so I understand you don't want traffic or turn them up on in either direction. Why? Up the newspaper just well, I've out. got pictures, so okay. I'll show that in a little bit. I'll, I, I think I can create, show you a little bit better with the pictures. <laughs> so if we're coming southbound from Holland, we can get on I-91, no problem. If you're in, you're so in you Holland, live in Holland, you're coming, and you want to get on I-91, and you just want to go south, no. or are we going to have to go through Derby Line and pick up the interstate in Derby? No, you can make a left turn from the light. From the light. We don't want we don't want people making left turns from 91. From the interstate. Okay, that's so, the issue. Is we're trying to prevent that. There is some left turn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And there'll be signs there that you can. And I and I that's just my residents need to know this stuff. But but show the if you would please show the map. Yeah. So I, yeah yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get there. I'm trying okay. to get there. So. Um, we'll just we'll just look to the so this just shows you know close close and these are the ramps that we're talking about right here so this isn't the best but it's on your handout so this is where that crossing is going to be right here so it's about where the on if you're traveling south, traveling north, it's where that off ramp is. She <coughs> went through the whole application process. So I'm traveling. They knew her and they hired her. When this detours in her on the grounds of. Want to go to Canada or want to go to Holland? That's it. That's the way that detour is going to be set up. Now, if I'm in Holland and I want to go to. 
Derby or I want to get onto the interstate and go southbound, I'll come down here, I'm going to stop at the light, when it turns green, I'm either going to take a left hand turn or I'm going to go straight. That's pretty much in a nutshell. That word, this big line, and I want to go southbound on the interstate, same plan as what you would have. This entry. I want to go to Holland, I just come down here, I'm going to stop at the light, go across. Okay. So there's always that east west yeah. is allowed. <laughs> how about, how about yeah. traffic that's coming out of the uh, right. intersectional right. facilities? Yep. Be there's going to be a light. So if I'm, if I'm at the border, I just come from Canada, I'm at the border, and if I want to go straight on the interstate, there's going to be a light. In most phases, it's going to be green. Um, but there will be a light to allow you to go southbound, and this little off ramp is still going to be there, I believe, we're using that off yes. um, so that you can get to Derby. So, and that's what we're, what we're saying is we just don't want any left hand turns from the border crossing, and that's why Holland people will be detoured. And same thing with people living in, living in Holland, and they're coming from Canada, they can come into Derby and turn around and then go back across. I didn't say that, but that's what most people will do. You know, you know. do it down the line anyway, because you can't turn right to go to Canada, so you have to. So you have to turn around anyway. So, I mean, so that's what people are going to do. Locals are going to know. But if, I'm, but if I'm from Canada and I'm camping, and I'm going to go to some campground in Holland, it's part of my vacation that I plan. I don't know those roads, so I'm going to follow the detour. That's, we want to get those people to follow the detour. What about emergency services? Yeah. Emergency yeah. services, same thing. Yeah, but are they going to be able to change these lights themselves, or are they going to have to wait for the light to change? I think um, I know that CCART has spoken with those with emergency services. No, they have not. Oh, that's good to know. We will, if we feel that, if you feel that that's what we need to do, then we will talk to Seacard about, there's, um, I know that there's, I had a project in Stowe where the emergency vehicles had some, like, uh, device in their vehicle and that they could switch the lights and there's some, something that we can have in the lights that will allow that to turn green for you. So, we, if we have to invest in that, we will. Is that what you do at, at lights now? No. What do you do now then? We slow. I'm still doing it. It was. We have our emergency lights going. I don't want to see a enunciated trigger of lights because you're going to get some nutcock Canadians coming there, and they're going to not know the lights are there. And then we're going to we're coming, and we turn them green for us, and then stop them. They're not going to stop in time. We go through red lights. It is now. We pull up to a stop, and we proceed with caution. So. Because you're never going to you're so never going to educate enough people to know that we trigger the lights. Well, the one nice thing is, the people coming southbound from Canada, they're, they're just coming from a stop anyway. Right. Yeah. The ones going north. So how are you going to slow down northbound? Okay. So northbound, well, we already said that we are going to be setting way back. We're going to start reducing the speed limit. All the way down. <laughs> In Canada, we don't want to. In Canada, we don't want to reduce traffic because it's coming down here. Traveling south, we don't have to do anything with the Canadian traffic. That's, it is what it is. got to stop at the border. So they can, don't have to do anything. Yes. So um, traffic is, some, is it just like gradual speed reductions or is it yeah. going to be a red light? Because some people, 18 wheelers, are still doing 60. That. They're not going to be able to. Can we? Can we um, I don't have it here. This is the best I have um, because it's so. So we have a reduction in speed starting set. It's pretty much far down that we start because it's supposed to be like 40 through here. You're right. It's supposed, it's supposed, to, be not, it's supposed to be 40. So we're going to be reducing them, I think, down 30 to 40. I mean, for 65, reducing it down to 55, 40, and so that this is going to be a stop condition. So it's going, there's going to be enough notification before you get there that there, there could be a stop condition that there's <coughs> there. There's going to be all sorts of signage that 
that implies that. Is there going to be a light there too for the North Valley? Yep, there's lights. Like, it's, okay. it's no different than coming. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example. I know that you're from up north. We have some of these uh, similar type crossings like on US 7 down south of Rutland. Um, <coughs> It's not an interstate, but it's it's considered a limited access. So there will be lights here. There's going to be lights here. There'll be lights here. Lights there. So it's just like a four-way intersection. Okay. It's a four-way intersection. That's the best way I can I can I can spell that out. If I work way. in Derby Line, live in Holland, I can come down. It'd be a cow issue. Okay. You can go back to lights. And then after I'm done working, do the horseshoe to go back. Yeah, you're, okay. it's no different, it's only different. I don't have to go to Engine 28 in the middle of the north. No. Okay. Because basically what we've done is we've taken the bridge and we've moved it here and it's now an accurate crossing okay. with lights. So that east-west traffic will always be able to do what it wants to do. Okay. Our issue is with the north and the southbound traffic and how we want to try to limit the amount of cars that are on there and not have the left hand turn here or the left hand turn there. And that's what that's the biggest difference. Originally we were thinking like a four way stop, but, but that's where you start running into a lot of issues with traffic. There, there, are, there are times in the summer after Canadian holidays <coughs> when traffic is backed up from the Canadian border past where you're showing that light. It's it's solid. You mean down down from here, right? Yeah. And beyond. <laughs> They don't stop. Uh, they don't let people through. They're just, they're just there trying to get back. So home. what's going to happen is that this, this, yeah. this will not. They will not be able to block this. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I totally agree with you. They block it. Then we. Then the contractor is going to have to get a UTL up there and get traffic so that that is not blocked. It cannot be blocked. During certain holidays, they should play out as a problem. Because it's a Sunday. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm aware of the. These We're aware of all the holidays. That that's part of, like, for instance, the contractor. If they originally they wanted to start this crossover, well, they want to start. Yeah, this crossover next Monday or Tuesday. We said no. In their contract, it's Easter weekend. It's too much traffic. We can't have that. And there's certain activities that they're not allowed to do because of the holidays, because of the traffic. So they do have, the contractor has some restrictions on what they can cannot do. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more what's going to be happening too, because this is just one piece of our traffic control, because there's another piece of our traffic control. Um, so... Can I ask one yeah. question about the lights? Will they be responsive to uh, east-west traffic? Like from Holland and Derby Line, so if somebody pulls up to the light, will it change for them? Because that's not as much traffic as as the north south. The north right. south will all the north, north, north south will have the priority green, and then as you pull up from the east west from Holland or Derby Line, it'll, it'll, it'll trigger. It'll trigger. It'll yeah. Turn green. Yeah. So it's not going to be a set off. It will be green right. for thirty seconds, and then green right. For but that will allow the locals to cross as needed without impeding. Exactly. Well, yeah, you gotta watch though. <laughs> but, and, it, and I think, you know, that the first few days this traffic control is in use, it's going to be a trial. In, in other words, if we run into issues, we gotta solve the problem real quickly. It's not, you know, we, we can fix things, we can change things as we go. So, when eventually, it should be running smoothly. And we will have. A cop up there for the for the first week or so, just to make sure people are following the sure rules of the world. What about yeah, pedestrian attention? There is no no access for pedestrians for this plan. If you put a cop up there, you get paid for the bridge. You don't want the Canadians going through there in the construction zone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we, we um, there will be no pedestrian access during the construction of this project. But I have to tell you that there wouldn't have been any. It was minimal. I don't even think we had any pedestrian access in the staging of the project either. Um, no, there, wasn't. there was none. So we, I think that at our meeting a couple years ago, we made the decision that we didn't. It, it wasn't enough usage at that point to warrant trying to maintain that. 
Um, the project is actually, we're going to get a much better project bridge at the end of the day. So when you stage construction, you end up with a joint in the middle of your bridge. A great place for moisture to get into it. I mean, it's, it's okay. It will, it will be there for our lifetime. Um, but now, we're not going to have any joints in this bridge. It's going to be one solid piece of concrete. The caps are going to be a solid piece of concrete. It's just going to be a much better project, a much better bridge when, when we're totally done with it. The other, um, just while we're talking about the new project, just so that you know, in the future, there's also going to be, uh, to help alleviate some of the uh, traffic issues that happen to the border crossing, is we're putting up uh, new overhead signs that are going to be tied in with the Canadian sign, and it's going to be all ITS, intelligent transportation systems with notifications about backups and stuff like that. So that is also part of our project. Um, so I think I think I covered this whole detour. So basically, and there's going to be message boards um, all over the place. There will be a lot of advanced warnings before you get to these lights. Yeah, and and um, you know the key is you know people follow the rules of the road, and we we know what we need to do, and hopefully we can there'll be enough notification that. Um, Others will too, and we hopefully we're going to be reaching out to trucking companies to let them know that hey, there's a change of plan out there. You need to slow down, and that is part of our, our public outreach is to let the trucking companies know what's going on so that they can slow themselves down. I, I, why? I know you don't want people turning not going in the direction. Okay, from the curbs to my auto, why, why is that? Because that. Left-hand turns will create, so what we're concerned about, part of it is that most people would obey the rule to make the left-hand turn, but we're also concerned about those Canadians, that, you know, or other people going fast and just kind of cruising, and then those people are sitting there waiting for the light to, turn, to make the left-hand turn, and we're afraid that people are going to, um, there'll be accidents. The other thing that we were concerned about, and that just dawned on me, it's really, it's all about safety. And one of the other concerns we had was, we were concerned about people missing that left-hand turn, coming down here and saying, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. And if you go, and if you go past that U-turn, well, you're in trouble no matter what, because if you don't have your passport and your enhanced license, you technically can't get back into the States. So, we don't want, we were trying to also alleviate those people trying to make those new turns around this area. Um, and this is really, this is a complete work zone. This whole area is going to be totally um, under construction. And the next, the other part of our construction is actually another way that we're going to be able to slow traffic down on a few occasions. So, one of the big things is that the contractor is not allowed to do any work where there's a risk of something falling on a car or a person under the bridge. So when we demolish the bridge, when we put the new girders on the bridge, and there may be a few, maybe some other occasions where we're not going to allow them to have traffic under the bridge. So one of the things the contractors decided to do is, uh, this is all the detour, it's really hard to see. So this is the other phase of the construction. So just to get your bearings, this line is the Canadian border. And so we're showing what we call the southbound. So they're actually in between the two existing piers that are out there. They're going to build a road in between those piers. And what they're going to do is when they're demolishing the west side of the bridge, um, traffic coming from Canada will come very tight radiuses, it's going to slow them way down, come down underneath the bridge, and then back over to the border crossing. So this is going to be a road in between the two piers. Um, another way that traffic will be slowed down. So the bridge is actually, now that I get my bearings right, the bridge crosses like right here. That's the roadway right there. And then the same thing happens going northbound. They're going to be slowed way up, and they're going to come and whoops. 
They're going to come in between the two piers, and traffic will be, go back up. So traffic is going to be slowed up. There are, and like you said, you know, traffic gets backed up there, like on Monday and Fridays on both ways, on the Canadian holidays and things like that. And it's still going to happen, and it may be a little bit worse than it is today. Um, but we're doing everything in our power for that not to be so bad. But in these cases, it's going to it's going to happen. So here's my, I knew I had this stuff. So here's our, here's the actual act crossing <coughs> below the border station. The border's right here, border patrol. There's that crossing. It's really hard to see, but as you're coming down from uh, Holland, when you're coming down, there's a stop bar. You're going to stop, wait for it to turn green, and then you can come through and make your left hand turn. And there's this there's this area where you can like be right there if you have to. You need to slow down to make that left hand turn. Um, and same thing here. Nothing's really changed in this area except you kind of just for those east west traffic. It's just right there. You just stop right there. So. Uh do you have actual time to build these lanes by next, by the second? Oh, they're not, that. it's not second. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, the weather kind of went The weather kind of, you know, it's funny, this isn't the only contractor here in the state of Vermont who had all these high hopes of really starting in like beginning of March, and then March, the weather was looking good, everything was fine, and then we got wham, bam, with all the snow, so it's actually slowed them down. And I was talking to Seth, and we're thinking that, and the other issue we have is that they're not allowed to put this traffic control plan in place until they can pave it. And the asphalt plants aren't working yet. Right. It's kind of a, it kind of varies by year when, when the plant's open. So. so they have to have this paved, and they also have to have, um, they don't have to have that other piece paved yet, but they can't use the other detour, they, detour until that's paved. So they're just waiting for the asphalt plants to open up so they get this in. They have a lot of signs yet to be installed. I think if you are on the interstate, you see that they put up a couple and they cut in, there's covers on them. There's some signs up, but there's a, still a lot of signs that need to be in place before they can allow traffic to cross back and forth. What about the northbound traffic that's going to Holland? Yep, they're just going to get off right here. Well, I see you got a bar there. Yes. There'll be a light there, there will so be a light. people cross and they don't need to worry about getting yep. people. So there is another light. So there's actually a lot of traffic lights. Um, Are they all going to be sync? They're going to be in sync so that north-southbound traffic, they get the green most of the time. And then when a car gets to this spot, that's when it will change to allow them through. Same thing over here. Same thing here. So yes, all, all the lights will work together. Yep. Yeah. And how long is this going to take? So um, they have to, they're, well, I've got the schedule. We'll, we'll take a quick peek. But they're, the completion date for the entire project is um, like October 18, something like that. But our hope, what we're hoping, kind of our encouragement to CCAR is to have this done before the Columbus Day weekend. So it's going to be, it's going to be the five, April, May, June, July, August, and September. Could be six months, could be five months, depending on when they get put the put the crossing in. Is that gonna is the ramp gonna be a state highway or a town highway? During the construction of this, it's yeah. a state highway. The ramp is state highway. Right, no, but but there well what we some of us call it called Holland Road, that's a town road, right? Well right, once you get onto Holland Road it's yes. a town road. It's a right, that's that's so if, if there's a if there's a problem, then the state would be responsible for the ramp up until up until Holland Road. If they had to call in the town for something, then the town would have to. Right. Do. So all of this ramp is state owned. That right. is not. It doesn't belong to towns at all. That's all. And then once you get onto Holland Road. That would be town road, be town and road. that would be the town's responsibility to means. But if there's an issue up at the end of this, we would probably during construction, we would take any issue that occurs with the roads. You need to let um, 
Jackie know so that she can let Seth know that there's an issue. If, if all of a sudden, because of the traffic, the way we had traffic, a hole popped up right there, we would have the contractor fix it quickly and take care of it. That kind of stuff. But the but the Holland Road is still the town road. It's not the state road. I mean, but if some reason it goes into November, who would be responsible for sand and salt and? It it will not go into November. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> no, uh, this person, I would not be happy. But, but so contractors, they, they, contractors have a completion date. And the only way that completion date can go longer than what it is, is if they have a certain rain days, or if um, something happens, whatever. But they get, they get paid, they have to pay liquidated damages for days beyond their completion date. So contractors want to get the job done. They, they don't want to um, go beyond that completion date if they can help it. And, and what typically happens is that we have a completion date of October 18th. So they want to get, they got to bring this, this area back to the way it was. So this, this pavement that's there right here, they got to take that out. They got to bring it back to the way it was before they paved it. So they have a lot of work to do after they take that signal system out. So I'm guessing, and we'll look at the schedule, but I'm thinking they, they're showing like sometime in third week in September or something, trying to start bringing everything back to the way it was. So they'll probably get started, I'm guessing, a week or so after, I'm going to say April 9th or 10th, they'll have this crossover in, possibly, if the plants are in. And then by third week in September, hopefully they're taking everything out. Because we really want them out of there before Columbus Day weekend. That's another huge weekend at the border. Is the town being compensated for anything? You know, because all of a sudden you're going to have a bunch of traffic, like right at the uh, Canada Day or whatever, a whole bunch more traffic in about 28 and going through town. Is, is the town being compensated for anything? At this point, no. So here's their construction schedule. So. We said, this was from two weeks ago, and this is when I talked. Where did we close the the first week of April? I'm, saying, I'm guessing the second week, could be later. Could be the end of the next week, I don't know. Um, and then the first thing they'll do once they have all the traffic all situated, they get all their traffic control plans in place, they'll start demolishing the bridge. Um, structural steel is the week after the 4th of July. Set structural steel. This is bridge open to traffic October 2nd, project completion October 12th. So that's really their goal is to try and, and when I say project completion, I mean that they've got everything all seeded and mulched, but it's not affecting the traffic. We don't want them out there affecting the traffic. So, any other questions? Time of construction, daily construction time? Uh, probably six to six. Six? Yeah. I mean, the, uh, the customs um, construction is limited to seven. We don't have any limitation. No limitation. So they can be there at dawn. Well, you, you got to think about the contract. So, and I, and certain contractors like to work eight hour days. Certain contractors will work ten hour days. Um, depends on the work that they're doing that day. So, for instance, when they pour the concrete deck, they'll be starting on like 4 35 in the morning because they got to pour that whole deck. And it's going to be a 16 hour day. There are noise restrictions. Though. Yeah, there are noise restrictions, right? They, so, what are those then? Um, it's uh, basically they don't even do a lot. I think it's after 9 o'clock. Noise restrictions, yeah. Um, the noise restrictions would be. Up to like I think it's 70 decibels, give or take. They can't do any work that creates a noise level above 70 decibels after 17. I'm trying to be worried about the more 80 decibels. I knew that somewhere. Thank you. For that. The question is, that I've been asked is more about the morning. Start. Right. You're concerned about the morning noise and yeah, because it's very residential in that area. Yeah. So so I mean. <clears throat> We, they don't have a restriction, so if they wanted to, I mean, most likely they're going to start. I mean, I don't know what they've been working now. Uh, they're on and off. Once the, everything's, yeah, and I'm not sure what JPC cards. Oh, they like, the sidewalks here, didn't they? Yeah. 
Detroit. Yeah, yeah. and then it's our tax So seven ish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there might be some days like like I was saying, saying when there's a when there's a big concrete floor, they, they, they might start early because they need to. And when they're and when they're removing the structural steel, that's a time sensitive work. And when they're setting the structural steel, it's time sensitive. So those those activities that are time sensitive, they may have longer days. But a lot of contractors will only work more than nine or ten hour days because they don't want to tire their 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 workers. And like I said, it really depends on the work that they're doing. Yeah. The uh, emergency vehicles, you say CPAR is supposed to contact their fire department? I was under the impression that they had run this, this traffic control plan through some folks. I will no way have spoken to the fire department. I'll follow it up with them tomorrow and make sure that they get come back to you guys. So that Great, just want to us with and that was one of our questions did you contact emergency both sides of the bridge like I don't know like Holland for instance where I don't know if they their emergencies to the east to the what you know I don't know that he's dead <laughs> that's what I'm wondering so it's important and that we, I all, make sure we also have the Canadian fire department the what the Canadian fire department come with us Okay, they should be able to. They should be able to. We need to talk to them. Yeah, we need to talk to them too. They can make the left hand turn. Don't tell anyone they said that. Emergency is an emergency, and that's where things. That's that gray area of emergency. We just want to say, I watched the car trailer come into the custom from where I live, I can see the uh, highway uh, sailing along on an air uh, engine brake right down into the customs like as he was moving and he used his engine brake so I'm wondering if there could be a sign saying no not using that either because you know they use that to slow down quick so and they're gonna have to be slowing down a little bit more now. yeah <laughs> um, we can we can look into that the same yeah, thing exists like, coming down the hill from some pretty large trucks coming down that way. It's not a lot, but they do. Well, that's they're something that you should to talk to the. They're going to have to be slowed down a lot to deal with that. Okay, so I, I'm going to have to look at what the signs are on that on the Holland Road. Yeah, because that's a steep hill, and they got to start slowing down at the top, not at the bottom. Okay, so that's good. That's a good thing that I'm not aware of. We'll take a look at that. You know, we can add more signs however we need them. They may not be up to start off. And, you know, I'm you, thinking you know, of uh, uh, you get the St. Uh, they're not, they're <laughs> not, I don't know how to right now. Uh, uh, the newer truck, look at the newer truck that didn't make a steel fill on the other side of the jury line. A couple of them because they were going down the hill. You said they didn't make it? No. So, no smelly? I don't know. Yeah. Not a good place to live, so we're going to work on the bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will get more signed up. Okay. Yeah. And that's the other thing. If we yeah. see that, so just so that you know from a town perspective, when you see that kind of stuff going on, I mean, I don't know if Derby uses the sheriff, they have little fees, the sheriffs, whatever, but, you know, try and get them out there. Um, this is like the side of my bridge project, but, you know, Tickets, a lot of tickets can eventually stop someone from doing something they shouldn't be doing. So you're not going to have any uh, law enforcement there, uh, except for the beginning? No, well, there'll be law enforcement there at the beginning, but any time, there will be certain activities where they're going to have to have a UTO there, or they're going to have to have, there will be flaggers a lot down there. Um, but if we find that we have, we are having issues, they have to provide some UTOs to try and solve the, 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 the issue. Provide what? We would, the contractor will, we will ask the contractor to say, hey, we need some UTOs. That's uniform traffic officer. So the contractor hired, they actually reach out to state police and sheriffs to hire officers to help with their projects. Those officers get, it's like, they get, um, it's like overtime for them a lot of times. 
So they have to branch out and find the TOs to come work on their projects. So unfortunately, there's sometimes when you have so many projects going on, and there's only so many PTOs available that we sometimes run into problems trying to find people. But the contractor will. And they understand, they know. They, they, want, they wanted this crossing, so they know that um, this is the, the, what they need to provide to help make it work. Um, this is not really a local concern, but the, the I-91 traffic through the port, north and south, is that going to slow that, the speed of the movement through there it significantly? Might, it might go north down. Because of the, having to wait for the bridge, you mean, and stuff like that? So I think that what's going to happen is traffic is going to be slowing down. Because they, they're only going to, in the light screen, they're, they're only supposed to be going X miles an hour. They'll go through, and then if everything's good at the border crossing, they'll, everything will be fine. Um, but what's going to happen when you have that, that red light, traffic's going to back up a little bit, and then it will go through, but then all the, the, those cars and trucks are going to be kind of arriving at the same time. So it could slow up uh, traffic there. Um, when... They are detouring through the media, through the two piers. That detour is going to slow things up because you're only going to the tracks are only going to go be able to go really like five miles an hour, ten miles an hour around the, the radius. So they're going to have to go slow, and it's going to slow things up because everyone again is kind of arriving at the same time. Uh, the um, I don't know if anybody local does this, but anybody from Holland who wants to go to Canada, they can go. Are they going to? turn right at the light then they won't well, they go all they, they're the way gonna to use that ramp. They're gonna have that ramp like they're gonna do exactly what they do now. Same thing. Same but thing. they're gonna end up at the light just the same as it's south No, no, they're gonna yield. They'll just have to yield on there. Uh, nothing will change essentially because that that little horseshoe is it, north be, of the light. So it's just, north of the light. Okay. Yeah, I just couldn't picture it, but it's Yeah, so it's it's, so it's uh it's way up here. Where they get on. Okay. Yeah. Way up there. So if somebody should want to cross that, no problem. Yeah. I think it'll most of the local go downtown, but two seven five thousand. Right. I mean, I mean, locals are going to do what they do. I mean, yeah. I think in every community that has some sort of bridge closure, the locals know how to get around. They know how to avoid the works that are put in place. It's yeah. really it's it's the others that we're trying to help as well. Get them where they need to go. Since it's not gonna happen Monday, how are you gonna alert everybody when it does actually happen? So they're supposed to if they're planning on doing anything, they need to have their message boards up and that's the other thing. They're not up and running yet, right? So and those are supposed to be up and running like two weeks beforehand, but so I think that Staff will be talking with the contractor tomorrow to find out really what their plans are and to say, hey, if, you know, regardless of whether they're going to do it next Friday or the following Monday, but the message board should probably start flashing soon. Yes. So, we, so that will be out there. We have, so all your names are on um, that sign-in sheet. Did everyone sign in on the sign-in sheet? Because that's a way for us to give you updates. And that's what Jackie's job is. She'll give you updates once a week or get something like, you know, it's Wednesday and they're putting the crossing into effect tomorrow, you know, tomorrow. She'll make sure that there's a notification sent out right off so that everyone on that's on our list knows. Um, it wouldn't be that kind of notice, but so the local media will get it out too. Yeah. If you can have, you know, if something's happening like on Friday, if you can let us know on Wednesday so we get that extra day. Yeah, we have one people that too. Awesome. Yeah, she's 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 gonna do everything. <laughs> um, and you can always, you know, you'll see Seth out there, so just stop him and ask him questions. I don't want people. <laughs> they are fine. They are fine. But yeah, so we they actually should have their message for us. And will there be something on five one one to like see if you click on it and tell you what's happening, sort of thing? And you said also in Quebec. They'll be marked down there. And they're going to help us out. If we run into any issues with traffic coming into the U.S., like major backups, they don't want that either. So we have been working with the ministry and working with the 
CDSA to ensure that um, those those backups are minimal. Because I do know that you know a year ago at Easter time with the DW project going on, there was a huge huge backup. It was bad. So we already wrote in our contract that they couldn't do anything Easter weekend or the day after because we didn't want that happening. And are they aware about the holidays that are particularly of concern? Yep. So, so the week of 4th of July, there'll be minimal work going on that week. Like they can't do anything that's going to affect traffic. Well, what about the um, Canadian holidays? The Quebec holiday in, in June is... Uh, oh, no, I guess it'd be really busy. Yeah, we have a list of holidays beginning at May 21st. Okay, because they're not, they don't coincide with ours. So no, right. they have more holidays than we do. Yeah. And, and yeah. the last two weeks of July, we yeah. had two. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. have some, they're actually it's in their contract that they can't do anything, any work that impedes traffic during the Canadian holidays as well as ours. Yeah. So, yeah. They're, so they have a lot of restrictions. So, so when I say they may have to work on days, they may have to work on days so because they get a chance. Right, right. Yeah. because they have restrictions to when they can and cannot work. You had a question? Yeah. Are your traffic signs going to be bilingual? Because there's a lot of kids come through that can't read English, trust me. Yeah. Amy didn't mention that. Because you go to Canada, I'll tell they got both bilingual language, you know, English, French, and I don't know. Don't we have a few of them? A few of them coming from Canada and, through, and, are, and under the bridge are bilingual, but for the most part. They're it's going to be just as important for a time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Right. So because uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's the truckers heading north and some of the north down. Traffic, you're going to want to slow down and know where they're trying to go. Okay. There's a lot of truck drivers in Canada that don't speak hardly any English. You can't hardly read English. All they do is they just drive and offload and go back. And that's the Right. And they're regular group drivers too. So the sooner the sign's up, the sooner they'll know. We, we may want to do um, on our message boards. That would be actually keys, the message boards, bilingual message, board. bilingual message yeah, boards, more important than having a stop and stop. The simple stop is the simple stop, but the message board saying, hey, this uh, new traffic pattern starting, you know, April 3rd, or bridge closed, or April 3rd, stop, traffic So can you work with your Canadian counterparts and have to put that sign? Is it there an electronic sign just north of the border? Yeah, I would talk to. Um, well, they can do it at 55. They can do it at 55. They can. They can do it. If we need anything, they'll do it for us. I think. The Canadians. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's just a good idea because there's just a lot of them that don't have a clue what English means. You're right, and I think I, I, I've been told that before. Like I said, we can add signs. It's sometimes pretty quick for us to get a sign if we need it. Any other questions? So, um, you all have a fact sheet. You have Jackie's email on there, correct? And um, give her, you know, send her an email if you have a question or if you see something that, you know, you have a concern with, let her know. She'll contact me or Seth to try and get an answer. She'll respond back to you. So, can be any, you know, we'll try and Make sure that the line of communication is always open. Anything else?